today we're going to try to answer the age-old question, which is, when does the release of the club head actually start? Is it true what people have been saying for decades, that the longer we can hold or lag the angle and then catch up at the very end, the farther we'll hit the ball? Or is it more true that we release the club more from the top of the swing and catch up at the bottom? So I think with today's technology, we can answer this question better than ever before. Right after this, we're going to talk about it. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. If you haven't yet picked up my Slice Cure video, I've left a link in the description below. You can pick it up. It's no cost to you. And if well, I know there's a lot of slicers out there, I think it'll really help. So today we're talking about the timing of the release of the club head. So what is the release defined as? Well, I would define it as the moment we start to apply an uncocking force, which if we're at 90 degrees of wrist cock here, the uncocking force combined with the snapping and rolling of the forearms would take the club head 180 degrees around the base of the club here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up a face-on view in super slow motion of a swing that I took today. And in the upper right-hand corner of the screen here, I'm gonna superimpose a graph now this graph comes from Dr. Kwan's uh, lab at Texas Women's University. He is a PhD in biomechanics, especially as it pertains to golf swing. Um, he's a true expert. This is where Tiger's last coach, Chris Como, came from under this umbrella. Um, super duper smart guy. The graph you're gonna be looking at is not gonna be me, unfortunately, but we're gonna see how it, that it compares about the same. Um, you're going to be looking at the graph of the hands torque or the when the hands and how much the hands are torquing or creating uncocking force. Um, this is a player who is a multiple time winner on the PGA Tour. So this is an outstanding TV player, a star, you would know his name. Um, so let's take a look. As I have started my swing down, you see about the point where I get to the hands being level with my shoulders, you can see the graph is going to start to spike. It starts off with a little bit of torque, but it's quickly increasing and it's peaking, oh, about the time the club reaches maybe. Um, last parallel down past the slot a little bit then it starts to subside and we're doing a little bit more relaxing and freewheeling through the impact zone so it's not starting precisely from the top but it is close enough to the top in our perceptions and intentions to where i could see why mike austin would say you throw the club from the top jack nicholas seconded that when he used to say I don't feel like there's any delay. I throw the club from the top of the swing. It's never too early as long as I'm moving over to my left side. So that's a, a rough quote. 
So again, we'll take a look at the graph one more time. I reach the top of my swing, I start down, and you can see right at about shoulder height, uh, my force or my torque about the wrist starts to really uh, spike to a very high level. So this is generally about the same point in every good golfer's swing where they're actually going to start releasing the club head. Some are a little later than others, but generally it's way back up by the shoulders. So for sure, the idea that the club is being held or lagged or the angle is being maintained as long as possible has totally been busted. Uh, we've got to throw that out. Um, the idea that you're going to hold on as long as you can and then try to catch up at the end or or hold the angle even through the impact it's busted we've got to toss that idea out we've got to get with the behind the science that we are tossing the club outwards way back up here so as take the club back to the top of the swing I'm trying to as much as possible unweight my left foot and I'm going to be doing that by raising the heel but also rolling my foot to the inside. This does not allow me to support a lot of body weight on my left foot anymore so most of it must be in my right. So I'm unweighting the left foot. I feel like the first thing in my swing that starts this chain of events is a step down. I'm just planting my left heel into the ground. And with that, if I had the wall behind me or a chair behind me, right now my left butt cheek would have rotated down and around the posted right, and it would be off the wall by several inches. As I'm stepping down into the heel, my left butt cheek is going to return to the wall and that's putting me in this kind of squatty looking position like a Sam Sneed, something like that. So those two moves also cause my chest to rotate slightly and my arms to advance to that shoulder height position that we're talking about. Now I feel like I am braced enough to where I can really unleash cocking force from the shoulder high and catch up with my left arm down at the ball, square the face up, get a good angle of attack, all the good stuff we want at impact to hit the ball a long way. Keep that in mind, the release starts at about shoulder high, preceded just barely by a step down and a plant and the left butt cheek returning back to square again. Hey, if you've gotten any benefit out of this video, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, like the video, leave a comment down below. Same thing if you just got some entertainment value out of it. Um, don't forget to check out the link also I've left for my new product. It's called the Power Coil Pro. Um, check out the link and uh, get one of them because they're awesome and they'll make you swing a lot faster. So hey, I'm Steve. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting me today. This beautiful, beautiful range. If I don't see you in the next video, I hope I'll see you further and straighter down the fairway. Thanks for watching.